South Africa is known as the cradle of humankind, so it would stand to reason that we have a lot of fossils to prove that. On the West Coast, there's another potential World Heritage Site, the West Coast Fossil Park. Let's take a look. When Charles Darwin wrote The Origin of Species in 1859, he probably had no idea that South Africa held some vital clues. With a landscape filled with archaeologically and geological findings, there is hardly a place you can visit in the country without bumping into some prehistoric finding. The West Coast is no exception. Bones that date back more than 5 million years were found here. Just 120 kilometers outside of Cape Town is the West Coast Fossil Park. Well, over 200 different animals have been discovered here. Um, invertebrates and vertebrates, uh, the whole range. It's actually one of the richest fossil sites in the world. Um, because you've got your mixture of marine, terrestrial and freshwater animals. And they were, the, the site was discovered through phosphate mining way back in the 1930s. The park has a special focus on education and attracts international scholars. The, the fossil park was opened specifically to um, allow the public uh, access to a, a fossil site and, and also to allow us to continue with our research. So um, based on the research we've developed education and tourism programs and the, the education programs include uh, hands-on activities, not, with a, not, not obviously in the, in the dig site itself but we, we simulate a dig and the, the learners are um, they're given the experience of what it is like to be a paleontologist. If your kids are interested in dinosaurs, then a visit to the park is a must. The informed tour guides can help them learn about prehistoric life, of a time when saber-toothed cats roamed the land along with short-necked giraffes, four-tusked elephants and strange three-toed horses. So underpinning the education and tourism programs, of course, is the research. So we couldn't do tourism or, or education without the research. And the research, as I say, started way back in 1958. Going forward, there are plans to expand the park's offering. Well, we're very fortunate to have received some lottery funding, and um, which is allowing us to build a, a beautiful new visitor centre within walking distance of the actual of this site um, and the, within the, that uh, project we are designing a new um, display interpretation centre so with much bigger and better displays and, and an interpretation altogether uh, and a restaurant and an education facility, multi-purpose facility and, and shop and so on. The fossil park also creates much needed jobs in the area. It's for me amazing om te sien die bene in die in die grond om te sien 5 miljoen jaar hoe groot was die hier. Nou wonder ek hoe groot was mense daai tyd gewees. En want ek is al ek het klenger geword. <laughs> maar ja, ek geniet dit om te wer. Geniet ek hou van puppe en uh, sies my my nietse en so if you're planning a trip to Cape Town and want to experience something different, then a scenic drive to the Fossil Park will be well worth your effort. Joining me from our Cape Town studio now is Pippa Haroff and she's from the West Coast Fossil Park. Pippa, thank you so much for making the time to talk to us. I mean, understanding that although the finds at uh, West Coast Fossil Park are not human, they do date back to over 5 million years ago. Tell us a little bit about why this is such a significant discovery. As you correctly say, the fossils are dating back to around about 5.2 million years ago. 
and it's an extremely rich fossil site. It's actually one of the richest fossil sites uh, globally and it has a, a mixture of marine, terrestrial and freshwater animals and that's what um, increases its, its uh, diversity and uh, these animals were living at the time that, um, fossil, that, that our ancestors were evolving. So they, they're actually highly significant in terms of the landscape at that time. Of course, uh, you know, you talk about a rich diversity and on the back of that, there must be work that is going on around preserving the site and ex also ensuring the expansion of the site. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yes, we, we have uh, ongoing research and, and uh, um, uh, programs. We work with uh, um, colleagues from all over the world, um, but also uh, uh, in here in, in um, South Africa, we have colleagues in, at the Iziko uh, South African Museum at, and at UCT, for instance. Um, but a new, new species are being named virtually um, every year. And um, but on the back of the, of the research, we, we run our education and tourism programs. So it, it's a fantastic vehicle for sharing the knowledge that is generated by the scientists. Of course, that's also really, really exciting and how you're getting that message uh, to permeate down. Perhaps let's take a look at some examples um, when we look at product offering and service offerings. We know from the cradle of humankind and Maropeng that in order to increasingly attract tourists, you need to diversify uh, what you're offering and how you're attracting them. Talk to us about your strategy and how you're ensuring that you're increasing the scope of product and service offerings. The, the site is not only about fossils, it's also about nature and we have walking trails and, and um, uh, we've diversified into to bird watching, horse riding and um, mountain bike trails and we have also public lectures, we hold events and we have um, great plans for building a new uh, interpretation centre which will um, in increase our, our product um, immensely. Pippa, you spoke earlier on about work that you do in schools and now I hear you now also touching on public lectures, but let's maybe take a step back and I want to understand whether you have a mandate to around education and research and if you do, uh, what are your key focus areas? We, we're focusing on expanding the, the um, research into the, the geological um, formation itself and, and extending the active dig site to, um, uh, to, to do more research but also to give um, more, to have more for visitors to see. And um, the, as in terms of education, fo uh, fossils and evolution are in the current curriculum and it's one of the best sites for, for learners to come and see the fossils in the ground and an active dig site and to view the, the bones of animals that died five million years ago exactly as they were buried five million years ago. I also understand that you're perhaps one of the fortunate organizations that has received uh, funding from the Lotto Board. Uh, what are you earmarking these funds for? Yes, um, what I mentioned just now actually, it's um, the bulk of the funding is going into a new a museum and interpretation centre and um, associated with that will obviously be a, a restaurant and, and, a, and a shop and more office space and, um, and an outdoor uh, auditorium. But the, the main uh, focus is on a, uh, will be a fantastic new display area an uh, interpretation center. Pip, I also understand that there's lots of exciting uh, developments around the work that you do now and that there are perhaps plans for a World Heritage Site Proclamation. Um, is this a, an, an accurate statement and if so, how far are you in that process? No, in terms of a, a World Heritage um, status, no, it, I think that's a bit far into the future. At the moment, we, um, we're working on national heritage status. We are currently a provincial heritage site, um, but 
fairly soon to become a national heritage site, and we're very proud of that. 